Ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and what a dramatic turn of events in this series. Definitely, and it's all down to this final map. We've had crazy, awesome play from Thorzane, then we had awesome play from Rhett, then we had a bit of a scrappy game on Terminus, yep. and then a quick game number four, down to the final game. What a great, great series this is for sure. And Daybreak, the final destination. Final destination. I'm really happy to see Thorzen do that. I really am. It's like, let's play another straight up slugfest on that. Let's not. Let's do what we know is going to work. And then let's have our final map be one that's actually in our favor, i.e. Daybreak. All right, man. It's time. It's time. It is time. Let's do this. Countdown has now begun, and <laughs> this is guaranteed to be dramatic one way or the other. A great final match for a great series between these two players. Both equally deserve to go through to the final, but only one will make it through this final match intact. Who will it be? We'll find out very shortly. As my scoreboard disappears. It's like, <laughs> the scoreboard gods have decided just to take my scoreboard away now. They, they, I, I'm not allowed to have it anymore. They're evil people. What can I say? All right. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to Daybreak, the map where this series will be decided and the finalist for the Shoutcraft Invitational number four will be determined. It is my pleasure to bring you Mouse Sports Thorzane. He is in the red trunks playing Town to the Southwest. Versus his opponent, it is Team Liquid's Rhett. He is in the blue trunks playing Zerg to the Northeast. And like I said, what a great last map for this series. Yeah. Daybreak. Great, great map. Very big. One Team Liquid's map of the year. Is it that did, correct? Yeah. yeah, it very it much a did. Very, very good map. There's some crazy, crazy games happened on this throughout the GSL, throughout many of the tournaments as well. So this is definitely going to be a pleasure. And I can't wait. I'm just like observing around. I'm like, what is Rhett doing? What is Thorzane doing? It's amazing that I can do this for this final game. This series has <laughs> been wonderful. It really, really has. It's been absolutely awesome. The series between the Stefano and Grubby was good, don't get me wrong, but because this has been so even and so equal, this has been incredibly dramatic and fun to watch, and both of these guys have played their hearts out up to this point. Yes, they have. And it's all down to this final passive game, for sure. Yeah. I wonder if Rhett's going to change up a little bit after that kind of 2-rex, or will he just be like, all right, well, you're not going to do it two times in a row. Yeah, I don't know if I'll see, we'll see him change up, honestly. I think after the game on Terminus, he's perhaps confident enough that his straight-up play is enough to beat Thorzane. And maybe even he's taken an indication from that, that, oh, well, he, he didn't think he could beat me on that map, so he basically went for an all-in. And maybe that's what he's thinking. But, as I said, if he thinks the way that you do, that, well, he deliberately did that to get himself onto Daybreak as quickly as possible, and that's why he picked Taldorim because he can execute that, then Rhett's got to be on his guard because there may be something up for Zane's sleeve. And it was a 16 pull compared to 17 on Taldrim, and he also is drone scouting this time around. So uh, probably a good idea. <laughs> he's going to get in there and will see gas as well. He'll see the gas timing that it's only just started to get mined from, so he knows it was 15 and knows that the command center is going to be coming down and actually doesn't quite see it, but he knows what's going on. He does oh, lose the drone. Yeah, nicely done there by Thorzane. Always uh, good to see a little bit of stutter step from him. He is more than capable of that. People view Thorzane as a slow player, but he's not. And APM-wise, he's insane. He's really great in that regard. Yeah, he's got a lot of uh, speed and control is very good as well. I love the overall position already from Red. Pretty standard, but I just like to see them getting into good positions already. Right behind the natural, and then the other one will be right behind the main base. Meanwhile, Rhett is now into gas and will be reaching 100 soon, straight into gas, and uh -huh. then we'll take a couple out. And I expect him just to go into his kind of fast two base layer. Yep. Uh, and then from there on out, just play a reactionary. And Thorzane throws down the factory. Will he be throwing down as he has the money? A third command center is 300 minerals. He will be racing up soon at 400. And yep. we'll find out in a few seconds' time if that's what he wants to do here again. Yeah, he's letting his minerals get quite high, honestly. So a second CC is extremely likely. I'm seeing a SCV moving across, and there it is. Ooh, and Rhett's actually stayed in gas with all three. He hasn't taken out two like he likes to do. He hasn't left two in either. We may be seeing some roach aggression here, which is, which is viable. 
I'm just checking though because he's still in Gaster 3. Unless he's going to go straight up to Lair really that fast. That would be really fast as well. Perhaps too quick because really what can you do at that point with Lair? What would that indicate in terms of the tech that he's going to choose and when he's going to attack? You're right, Roachling aggression may very well happen. We haven't seen Rhett bust all that much up to this point. And it might be something to do in this final game. It may be a way to pick holes in Thorzane's build. And Rhett's got a lot of experience and tournament experience to understand what somebody's thinking. So when somebody goes for that two racks play and then plays straight up on the last game, um, you know, it could be something Super to punish that. Layer. But yep. yeah, the layer does come down and he basically goes layer um, at an okay timing, but he has 92 gas banked up after he goes layer. So um, instead of taking out and focusing a little bit more on a macro hatch or extra drones, he has a lot of gas already. So that's a little bit different here from Rhett, of course, and Sixlings are in making, and I suppose he's going to be going straight into into the Spire, of course, but he will be having a lot more Mutilus than he would do normally because he banked up a little bit more faster. Yeah, that could be a potential weakness so with Thorzen's build here. Obviously, his Marine count is quite low as a result of him going Reactor Hell. The funny thing is, he's actually not going Reactor Hell. This is Blue Flame. Yeah, and he's got a Marauder out too. The Marauder was put out um, for defensive reasons because uh, he thought that maybe, yeah, Roachling could come. Um, what we're going to be seeing now, though, like you said, is Blue Flame Hellions, and that's going to be very good against the only Ling that we see Rhett dealing with or playing with early At the on. moment, yeah. He only has Lings early, never gets Roaches early. He may make a couple of defensive Bailings, but against Blue Flame, it, it won't matter that much. And we do have a second factory down now with Reactor, so we are going to be seeing some Blue Flame Hellions coming out. I wonder if he'll stick on it for the entire of the game, though, whether he'll go up to Mech fully for the rest of the game. Uh, it is questionable, and he may do that. So that's something I want to follow. But there is the Spire down, and look at that. He only has eight Lings out right now. Four Hellions. And he's going to probably... Is he going to break down? Oh, he's just going to snipe a crew Chima. Very nice. I was yep. going to say, maybe he wants to break down the Structable Debris. But right now, making ten Lings at once. Stopped at 44 drones, making ten Lings. Saw the Marauder, and is now morphing some Bailings as well. An additional Spine Crawler. And, you know, sniping that crew Chima may not have been the best thing there for Thorzane. Because it didn't really do anything, but I, it revealed have, the, the Marauder, which may have scared hmm. Rhett a little bit. Maybe, But maybe that was deliberate. I have to wonder if it was deliberate to bring that one Marauder out and then say, hey, look, look what I've got. He didn't reveal Blue Flame because it wasn't done yet. Thorzin's now going double armory, so yeah, double armory mech, is, yeah, so. it's, it's full on mech, there's no doubt. That's interesting. So these Blue Flame Hellions, and they don't have to go up that funnel there. They can go around the back as well. And if they get into position behind the mineral line, Oh, Devastating. Man. That's it. That could be GG right there because he can't recover from that, especially against somebody who's gone three CCs. Blue Flame Blue is now Flame being has revealed. Been revealed. Yep. Lings and Bings have to come around. He has to prevent him going around the back. Yeah, Muters are on the way out as well, though. Bear that in mind because they came out at a really, really nice timing. And Thorzane is spending time killing Creep Tumors where he really needs to be in the back of that mineral line as the Mutalists continue to come out. These Hellions are going to be killed off. Yeah, and he's, is he going to take his chance now? Is he going to try and go behind? But the Muters are out, and maybe when the Muters go, he'll either run or fight. And I think he's scared, though, because he realizes that Rhett must have some units hidden somewhere. So he doesn't want to just throw all these away. Uh, he he now to, knows about the Muters. Yeah, he wants to preserve them for later on, for a push, probably, once he gets onto the three bases. And he just kills a lot of creep tumors, which is okay as well. Uh, but obviously, Hellions around the back would have been game ending, but it was a risk. And oh, he's going for it now, though. He's going to go for it now. Yeah, he looks for it. And the Mutas actually haven't pulled back either. They're going for full on harassment here. The thing oh. is, there's not a lot of them, and there are enough missile turrets to stop that from happening. Falls in focusing now on denying that hatchery. Hellions are pretty bad at this, but they can do that in that a number of actual units. A tank the... does go down by these Mutas, yep. and he comes back to defend. And... Rhett may have to cancel this base. He may have to cancel uh, it. Yeah, that, that's not going to come up. Unless, of course, he's able to defend with those. That delays it for a little bit of time. The Mutas are now on the halfway across the map. That's given the hatchery just a little bit extra. Banelings connect, and in come the Mutas from the back, doing yet more damage, and Rhett keeps it alive. Yeah, he doesn't want to cancel that. That would be so bad if he had it that cancelled. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, yeah, he did kill a tank with the Mutas, and nice uh, preservation with these Hellions, keeping them alive for as long as possible. Meanwhile, we have got Thor's coming out, which is going to be great against this Muta style. And the Muta style has to tech switch out of it. I'm surprised he's actually still getting plus one attack for them. Um, to be honest, he should have just cancelled that and got the gas and just thrown that into Roach Speed and other upgrades, because he has to tech over into Roaches now. Um, ideally, what Rhett needs to do now is tech up 
as fast as possible. Take a fourth base as fast as possible. He's playing against Mech. Mech is so slow that a fourth base is never going to be shut down early. And then he can get the gas income, go to high faster, and look for that Broodlord composition late game. And if any pushes do come, they has to build Roaches, man. Otherwise, he will die. Yep, the Hellions might actually get out of there. <laughs> Those can be fixed up and used later. Very important to do so for now on the field. Still, he remains in that plus one, and it looks like he's going to allow that to complete. Mutas now moving out to try and deny the space. Two Thors should be enough to shut them down, though, without too much of a problem. Thorzane backs off, and SCV killed off, and the refinery goes down as well. But once the uh, Thors move into position, he should be okay. There's a few lings around there, so the Hellions may need to move in as well to just keep an eye on that third. Yeah, really good play from Rhett now. Really, really good. And he's going to jump on these as well. This may not be the best decision, actually. Uh, all he needs to do is kind of slow Thorzane from taking a third base. And yeah, that was a bad decision to try and do that. There are RCVs they're repairing. So, And I did like it initially slowing down that third base. If Thorzane had taken that a couple of minutes earlier, obviously everything's going to happen faster for Rhett. But it's in slow motion right now because he delayed that. And now he's got a hive really, really fast now. That's awesome to see. And he's taking the fourth base really, really fast here also. Uh, no more muters are in production. Bit of harassment may still come out of them though. And I wonder what Thorzane, is he going to try and hit a timing? Is he just going to take it to late, late game? If he does take it to late, late game, he's going to have to start throwing starports down soon as well to combat the Broodlord mix for sure. This is very, very true. And this large force of roaches massing in the center here, they do have speed and he's working on Borrow as well. May follow that up with a tunnel and claws. Admittedly, that is a gas heavy and very expensive upgrade to go for at this stage. Third base now complete and saturated. This is, of course, an orbital command, as we saw many, many minutes ago when it first was built. And SCV count looking really great. But the problem is Rhett's got to 83 drones. He's really sliding into his comfort zone here. And no initial harassment, except, of course, the possibility of some damage here with those Blue Flame Hellions. Yeah, they could do so much damage. And Rhett doesn't know they're there. So, and Rhett and Thorzane's going to go for it now. Oh, so unfortunate from Thorzane, though. Yeah, there's nothing there. And in the meantime, in come this massive rope force which annihilates the Thors completely and that entire mineral line is going down. Thorzane can't stop it or maybe, maybe, just maybe if he can draw them into the tank fire. No, he doesn't want to go up that ramp at all, right? He just wants to kill these SCVs and he's done it well. And that is 25 SCVs down for Thorzane. Rhett doesn't care about these roaches. He's at Hive. He can make a Great Aspire now. And he can just advance into the next level. There is the Great Aspire. He doesn't give a crap about those roaches. He did so much damage there and slowed Thorzane down. Those Hellions were unfortunate in the bottom right. They expected that base to be saturated. It wasn't. Yet they yep. were not. They only killed two or three drones. And even the second wave now gets picked off by roaches. And oh, we just squeeze in. They do have plus two, so they will be able to one-shot drones immediately. But there's once again, barely there's any drones there. to one-shot. Yeah, he'll he'll get a couple out of this, no problem. But not really worth it. And like Rhett's going to care about four or five drones. He's got so many more, and he's just built another ten. He's on 97. This yeah, is the man. Rhett that we know and love, and Thorzane. Thorzane's getting crushed at the minute. Yeah, he's got 97 Jones. It's a little bit too many. He should probably just like build five spine crawlers somewhere just to bring them down a little bit and yeah. open up supply, especially using roaches. At least get rid of the roaches Transition if you're going to try this. Transition on its way because... through here from Thorzane. Yeah, starport's going to be for Vikings and so on to deal with the uh, brood lords. But he needs to get rid of these roaches. Like they're they're, they're two supply each. They're not going to be able to do that much. He just needs to do some damage. Well, this is one way of getting rid of them. And Run. also onto the third base as well. Yeah, third base is taking yet more punishment. Easily sh shut down there by Thorzane, who has exceptional upgrades right now on his vehicles. Looking for plus three attack on that, but still the roaches come in and do a little bit more damage to that base. And Rhett's on four full bases, and he's not being touched. Fifteen Corruptors coming in for Rhett. Fifth and sixth base being taken. Rhett is out of control. He's preventing the fourth base as well with these roaches, which he doesn't care about anymore. 15 Corruptors, he should really throw down a second Spire and start working on the upgrades because he's at 1-1 one, one, but he ideally wants to be at 2-2 two, two, uh, and so on for the Corruptors and Broodlords yep. and we do have the Starports out now, both adding Reactors onto them and a third Starport as well so he's going to be able to make a lot of Vikings very very shortly but I'm a little bit you know, surprised we don't see more upgrades continuing from the Spire but he doesn't have that much gas right now, he's trying to throw all the gas into Broodlords and once he takes the gases from that fifth base in the center, then he'll start upgrading, I guess. Yeah, Thorzane's actually going Orbital Command in the center, as opposed to Planetary Fortress, which is dicey, but he knows he's behind economically. He's got to take that risk. Going Planetary Fortress isn't really going to help him in that regard, especially against a maxed-out Zerg army. Thorzane's still behind in terms of supply, although he's starting to catch up, building plenty more Thors. He's got five on the field, seven will be here momentarily, five Vikings at once here, three Starports. 
Yeah, ooh, Hellion's in the middle, but not too much damage. Thor Zane's game here is no biological units. That's basically what he's saying, and that includes SCVs. SCVs will get sacked eventually. Um, they are going to lose their jobs because he just wants overtook commands for mules all over the place. Yep. And he will literally go pure mech, not even SCVs, uh, eventually in this game. And Vikings are on the way out now as well. We do have plus one ship weapons coming. And Rhett does hold the middle map and he's mining gas for me. He's going to take the south one as well. And this is what I love from Rhett is unlike any other Zerg player, he's not going to sit back and wait for a million years before attacking. He's going to start doing it now while banking up preventing Forzane from doing anything. Forzane's undeployed as well, that's potentially... But I think, why has he not got the Zilnaga? It's right there, the Zilnaga would give him visibility of what's happening. Yeah, it's a little bit bad, there he goes, there does he's take got it. it. But these Broodlords are going to do so much damage. He has to be careful though, it does have a lot of Corruptors, but there are a lot of Vikings as well here. Yep, and the Vikings do and get an initial wave in, yeah, the Thors, and those are grouped up as well, and Thors are not the most effective unit against Broodlords, but if they're going to be grouped up like that, it's going to do some serious damage. The SCVs now being pulled off in order to repair those units, and Thorzane, he's still got five Vikings, he's crushing this force in the center. Yeah, SCVs on auto repair in the middle there, healing everything, can. Red but loses a lot here, and that actually was really That's equalized bad. the entire game, that was disastrous for Red. I don't know what the hell he was thinking. Maybe he just didn't think those Thors would be as effective as they were. Because generally speaking... Well, the, the Thors are 3-2. They're 3-2, exactly. Uh, the Broodlords are not well upgraded. He upgraded ranged attack. He didn't upgrade melee. He didn't upgrade the actual air attack either. So that in reality... Oh, this could be so good from Rhett, though. It the, could be. Oh, the tanks are going to... I was going to say, the tanks are going to siege up, though. I was wondering if he wasn't going to siege the tanks up because of the threat of Broodlords, but... A lot of roaches are coming, but with these siege tanks and Thors in the front, Thorzy may have just won this game, or at least got he close might to have, winning He it. might have. The roaches now streaming in from the side, and the roaches can smash their way through that, but we're looking at plus three. Those Thors will wreck everything in that scenario. Some tanks being taken out here, trying to repair as best he can. Thorzane is equalizing supply, smashing his way through these roaches. 24 more on the way, but... He's wearing him down. Rhett has got roach after roach wave streaming in, and Thorzin's army has taken a big hit, but now he takes the supply lead. Yeah, one big thing missing from that fight earlier was Infestors, man. With Fungal Growth, it would have been so much easier for Rhett to fight, and he's going to go in with one big wave. He's still got a lot of supply and a lot of resources, but... The upgrades from Thorzane are so They're strong. They're huge, absolutely huge. Plus three on those Thors. They wreck roaches incredibly fast. More tanks, and now at least he's got a small, small group of Hellions at the front to buffer it. Nothing but roach coming out from red. He can't afford to take any more time to build anything else. Good micro as well by Thorzane. Moves out of roach range. Another Salzburg tank fire landing in the middle of that roach force. Red supply skyrockets as a result of building roaches, but he's not effectively killing Thorzane's army. And tanks to the north base as well now. Thorzane getting quite comfortable. Doesn't want to spread out too thin though. There's still a lot of roaches around. But yeah, this is starting to turn into revenge here from Thorzane. Finally getting it back on Rhett. But Rhett still has a lot of supply. Still at 190 supply. A very strong economy as well. It's allowing it to build these roaches. The problem is the roaches really aren't doing all that much. He's not killing many tanks. He's not killing many units at all. Another base falls. Doesn't know about this one. Roaches now coming from behind. Will be able to clean his tank fossil, but not without losing a ton of resources in the process. Thor's ain't still in the game. He's taking a pounding one way or the other. They're tearing chunks out of each other here. Yeah, but I think these upgrades are just a little bit too much here for Red. He's trying to go through, but three Thor's at almost 3-3 three, three are just going to bash these back every single time and expansions are dying for Red, which means his economy and his continuing to reinforce army is not going to stay there for much longer. He's only building 7 now instead of 40. Yeah, that's a huge difference. The Thors may finally get cleaned up in the center here. The Thors it needs to mass a new army. Also, he now knows about this base as well. Absolutely crucial. That base is going to fall by the looks of it. That puts Rhett back on how many mining bases. Is that just one? It is. Yeah, just one right now. And Thors is still mining from pretty much two. One in the middle and then one at the back left. But mining gas and a few minerals from the natural, but has a much, much stronger economy right now. The income basically is double everywhere for Thorzane right now. He's going to be able to remax a lot faster than Rhett does. And there's even Vikings just picking off overlords as well, being a nuisance in the bottom right. And Rhett smartly does come towards this back base, but this is actually a very nice move. This is very, very good to slow Thorzane down a little bit more. Absolutely. You won't be able to kill the command center since it is airborne. But yes, yeah, slowing Thorzane down, preventing Thorzane from gaining a large mech army once again. Both of these guys have done massive damage to each other. But look at the efficiency. Look at the difference here. It's huge. Yep. 
And Roach is doing a lot of damage to SCVs now, but there's tanks in the bottom right. And if Rhett can't mine from that bottom right base, he's on one base. That's it. And that may be a little bit too difficult for him to play from. Yeah, it's looking a tricky. A Rhett with nothing but Roaches at the moment. And this is an... It, it makes Rhett's play one-dimensional, and it means that Thorzen can find holes in it and exploit it. Still, Roaches are a lot faster than tanks and Thors, and if he, recollect, if he gets every single Roach he has together, and he has 35 right now with some in production, if he manages to smash through these tanks, and already tanks are going down, maybe he can stay in this game, but it's so close, and he loses down it the goes. expansion. Yep, those Thors will be picked off, but not without taking a massive toll, especially with tanks continuing to shell from that position. So, hey, that, that Thor almost lives, and... It has no intention of going down without a fight, and Rhett is now dipping to almost 100 supply. And, oh my god, look at all those mules in the top left. So many mules. Thor is never going to run out of money. He's oh got my a new god. base. He can take a new one again soon. He just has so many mules. And, oh my god, he's just steamrolling now. Rhett comes in one more time to try and clean this up, and he may just get these two tanks, but... <laughs> it doesn't matter, man. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm a Zerg player now, but there is some joy seeing four roaches just evaporate. And the tank even lives. It's so well upgraded. He does not give a single damn at this point. A new force of doom marches across the map. Rhett is under 100 supply, and Thorzen could very well go through. Uh, Rhett's thrown this game. He was so close to winning it in the center with those Broodlords, but he just went a little bit too early, especially without Broodlords. And GG! GG! Ladies and gentlemen, Thorzen is in the finals. Thorzen versus Stefano will be the SCI 4 final. Rhett falls down to the bronze match to face Grubby in one of the tightest series we've ever seen in this tournament. Oh, wow. Mech's pretty good, man. Indeed. Congratulations to Thorzen who advances through and maybe he's broken that pressure curse of his recently. Finally, yeah. As he hasn't really performing as well as he should be at his level. TSL3 champion is back once again to fight in another huge tournament online. And Rhett does go down to play once again Grubby. So we're going to have another Grubby versus Rhett rematch once again. And finally, Thorzane's broken that curse as well against, uh, against Rhett finally managing to win and pull back the series between them. Congratulations to both of these players for, for a fantastic series as well. Oh man, that was incredible. That was so much fun to watch. My heart was pumping. I was so stressed during that matchup. Huh. And it all turned around in that one big engagement. The Broodlords rolled out. It even looked bad for Thorzen because he didn't see them come into the last moment because he forgot to take the yeah. Zelnaga tower. It was like, oh, uh, and then suddenly, hang on a second, he's got plus three. And the, I suppose the misconception is that Thors are good against Broodlords. They're not. They're actually really bad. But <laughs> if, if you stack them up, if you stack your Broodlords up and those Thors have plus three, and you're going up against only 1-1, one, one, then yes, you can do it. The SCVs came in from the back, and engaging actually that close to Thorzane's fourth was potentially the downfall, because there were SCVs ready there to yeah. come and help out. And when you've got that many upgrades, your units are not going to die against poorly upgraded Broodlords like that. And that was absolutely disastrous for Rhett, and that's when the game turned around. The momentum swings in favor of Thorzane, and at that point, he starts rolling over Rhett. G to the G. G to the G, ladies and, and gentlemen. Wow. I guess we're going to get ready for Grubby versus Rhett next. Grubby versus Rhett is going to be the next one, yeah. Grubby and Rhett will be playing in the best of five because there is a big difference in prize money. No doubt about that. 300 for fourth place, but 600 for third. And that's in addition to the tips you guys have already given. You guys have been incredibly generous with that, by the way. And if you happen to feel like a player is worthy of a couple of bucks from your PayPal, then please head over to shoutcraft.com or bit.ly slash SCI4 dash tip jars if that site goes down, which it has quite a lot. We have broken the record once again for SCI. We are approaching 40,000 concurrent viewers. This is huge. So thank you very much for that. And of course, you can donate to the next tournament as half of that. Half of this one, in fact, was actually sponsored by you guys. So thank you very much indeed. All right, folks, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we will be bringing you Grubby versus Rhett in the bronze match.